Hi good lifers, welcome back to the channel. Have you ever found your garden plot just overrun by pesky pests and try and figure out how to get rid of them whilst not resorting to all those harsh chemicals that we're trying to keep out of our diet? If you have, this video is definitely for you. My name's Nikki from Back to the Good Life and today I'm going to be taking you through some of our favourite methods to get rid of pests in your garden and in your allotment using nature's own remedies. These methods are eco-friendly so they're not going to harm your plants, they are all organic so you don't have to worry about any harsh chemicals and most of them are very very cost effective. So if you are like us and on a tight budget, this is also for you. Let's get on to it. So first things first when it comes to trying to figure out how to get rid of pests, it's actually trying to figure out what pests we're having problems with. Now depending what you grow in your garden and how you grow your garden, you could at all, all times of the year be affected by all sorts of different types of pests. The main ones that we really don't like are slugs. If you watch my video about things you can do in half an hour in your allotment, slugs do feature quite heavily in that one. The thing about slugs is they never seem to eat things that you're not that bothered about. They always seem to eat things that you really are that bothered about. Other problems that we have on our allotment, especially this one, is definitely problems with rodents. Uh, we know that there's rats and mice on the allotment. Thankfully I've not seen them personally, but I've definitely seen evidence of them. That looks distinctly like a rodent hole. Another problem I had a real problem with is um, caterpillars from the cabbage butterflies. They're a right pain. We just covered a bit of netting on that one. It's kind of stopped them, but didn't stop them a lot. So this is the sort of thing I want to try and stop. Aphids is another thing that we have problems with. We had that here both at this allotment and on our little tiny garden patch at home. So we're definitely finding that we're seeing some of the most common bugs. So this year we've tried to make sure we can see any natural methods and eco-friendly methods to get rid of some of these bugs and to try and minimise them. So how do you know if you've actually got bugs and got a problem with bugs and pests on your allotment? One of the most common problems you're going to see, even if you don't see the pest, is chewed or missing leaves. We've all been there, we've gone out, gone away for the day, come back to our allotment and come back to find that lovely brassica plant that was growing nice and big, now looks like some sort of disaster zone. This is normally due to things like snails, slugs and caterpillars. They can be in right pain and they definitely are the garden, gardener's worst nightmare. Another really common thing you're likely to spot is discoloured leaves or leaves that look like they're just about to die. Uh, we sadly lost one of our rose bushes um, this year to a rose fungus that was on the leaf and I noticed it because there was different coloured spots on the leaves. It was absolutely devastating, we tried everything to save it and unfortunately it was one that G had bought me for our very first Valentine's Day together. He always buys me a rose, a, a rose that I can plant which is always nice. Uh, but yeah we sadly lost that to a rose fungus so not something I'm very happy about but again if we'd spotted it earlier we could have possibly done something about it. So look out for discoloured leaves and leaves that just look a little bit not as healthy as they could be. Another thing that you can look at is for sticky bits on leaves and plants. Things that look a little bit sticky with what looks like a mould on them. This can be down things like mealyworms and aphids. That's the sort of things that they can leave on these leaves and make it really, really clear that you have a bug problem. Of course, one of the clearest signs that you've got a problem with bugs is actually seeing them on your plants. This happens normally when you've got things like slugs and caterpillars and aphids and green flies and white flies and things like that. You will actually see them on your plant. One of the best methods to get rid of it before we even jump in is to literally pick that bug up and remove it. What you choose to do with it is entirely up to you. I would suggest feeding it to chickens if you have chickens or giving it some sort of trip that it's not going to come back to your garden from. I'm sure you can use your imagination. So now you know some of the things to look for, how do you actually go out and look for these things? Early detection is absolutely super important, so the more you can be out checking your plants the better. If you can make it a habit to have a check of your plot every couple of days, have a really close up look to a lot of your plants and see what's actually going on. You'll normally notice the discoloured stuff, the um, rotten leaves, things with holes in them, things like that. And hopefully when it's damp, so especially in the early morning or even in the early evening, that's the time you're likely to see things like slugs really doing their worst and you can remove them from your plants and from carrying on their little merry business. So we're going to look at five different ways for you to use natural methods to help to stop 
pests in your garden and to help to protect your garden against pests. The very first method is something that I've talked about in quite a few videos, it's one of my favourite methods, is actually companion planting. What this means is planting two different types of crops in the same space or very, very close to each other, especially crops that deter each other's pests. Different crops give off different chemicals, and this is not a bad thing, not all chemicals are bad, but different pheromones, different scents, different chemicals that some pests don't like. And if you can find the two crops whose pests don't like each other, then these are the ones that we can hopefully plant together as long as they're not detrimental to each other. So an example that is really, really common in a lot of gardens is carrots and any, any form of onion. So leeks, spring onion, um, even garlics, things like that. Anything from the Allium family. Because the smell of garlics will actually deter carrot fly. And of course carrot fly is for the carrots. So what also has happened quite useful as well is that carrots grow downwards and onions tend to grow upwards so it doesn't matter too much if the onions block out a little bit of the light from the carrots because the carrots are quite happily growing downwards so carrots and onions is a perfect opportunity for companion planting that will hopefully deter each other's pests and companion planting isn't just limited to actual vegetables either so for example you can grow marigolds with tomatoes marigolds will act as not so much a natural deterrent for slugs but slugs tend to eat marigolds before they eat the tomatoes so we'll leave your tomatoes alone a lot of people also plant basil with tomatoes because it can deter quite a few of the bugs that tomatoes are prone to and basil tends to make the tomatoes taste a bit better apparently i'm rubbish at growing tomatoes so if that's true let me know in the comments the basil normally grows well but tomato plants mm -hmm. So tomatoes are actually in the nightshade family and nightshade family is also shared by the peppers. So basil and peppers works really well as well because basil deters the bugs that peppers can be prone to as well. So for anyone who grows cucumbers, you must know that aphids are a big problem. Uh, another what we call trap crop, so something that's going to stop the bugs going to the main crop that we want is nasturtiums. Nasturtiums are a great flower. They are also edible, so you can eat them as well. But nasturtiums also attract aphids to them so if you plant them near things like cucumbers you're likely to deter the aphids from the cucumbers and let them attack the nasturtiums instead so it's a bit sad but trap crops are a really great idea okay method number two for natural pest control this one might involve spending a little bit of money but not a lot at all i promise you so is to actually provide some sort of physical barrier away from the pests so things like moths butterflies, pigeons, pigeons are really bad at eating seedlings, uh, if we can actually just keep them away from the plant in the first place, they can't lay their eggs or in pigeon's case they can't eat up the seedlings. That's a really good thing. So a fine netting is a really good idea. You'll see a lot of netting around on allotments. People generally tend to use that to deter things like birds definitely, but of course things like butterflies so they can't lay their eggs for caterpillars. Um, so fine netting or fine cloth of some description. Uh, if you have got kind of inclement weather, although we might not think of that as a pest, in the UK the weather is definitely a pest, but inclement weather, using things like um, a cloche of some description, so a little kind of greenhouse over the plant, can do wonders. It's not only going to stop the butterflies and the birds from coming in, but it's also going to stop the harsh weather from affecting your plants too much. So using some kind of physical barrier is a great method of deterring pests. Physical barriers are a great method, but there are some pros and cons to doing it. So the pros are that, of course, that they work fairly well. So everyone uses netting to stop things like butterflies and birds. They're a great idea. The downside is that they obviously can cost money. Um, you can get netting and things like that fairly cheap, but you've still got to part with some money. And the other downside is some of them can cut out the light. So if you use a material that's too heavy, it actually can block some of the light and end up being bad for your plant in the end. So the last thing to think about if you are using barriers to protect your plants and pests is water penetration. So rainwater is the best type of water for your vegetables, we all know that, and if you've got a barrier method that's actually stopping that rainwater getting to your vegetables, there's two things that are happening. One, you have got to water a lot more, which could be a pain for you. Also, you're more likely to have to resort to tap water, which isn't quite as good for your vegetables. So make sure the barrier that you're using is fine enough so that things like butterflies can't get through it, but also thick enough to allow rainwater and good water penetration, or invest in a really good um, irrigation system set up to a rainwater tank. That would be absolutely perfect.
Okay, so number three is actually one of my favourite methods of pest pest reduction in the garden. It is actually to encourage natural predators. This is a really big thing in permaculture where you encourage the thing that eats the thing that's annoying you. So things like ladybirds or ladybugs as you call them in America, they will actually eat your aphids and things like that. So we want to encourage those kind of things. We want to encourage good predators into the garden, even birds in some cases. So most small birds like robins and things are probably not going to be too bothered about your seedlings, but they will love to eat the bugs and other bits and pieces that you want in. So planting things that attract pollinators, attract other beneficial insects and birds to your garden, it's a really good idea. Feed the birds, make sure they've got plenty of water, plant things like dill and yarrow, which again are really great for you and your health, but also fantastic for, for encouraging natural predators, which is something that's gonna then hopefully keep your pest leveled down a bit. We hope, that's the plan. Okay, on to method number four, and this is to create your own natural spray. Sometimes pests happen, and what we need to do is actually start to get rid of them. And I don't want you to resort to harsh chemicals. They're not good for the environment. They're not good for the other insects that are gonna be hopefully feasting on those pests. And they're really not good for your body. So ignore the harsh chemicals. I have two and a half solutions for you that are proven fairly effective. The first one is to create a garlic spray. I love garlic for so many reasons. It tastes really, really good, but also it's a really good deterrent. Did I say to you before that growing things like alliums, they produce a really strong smell, which a lot of pests don't like. You can use that to your advantage. So use two garlic cloves, chuck it in a blender, fill it up with about a litre or so of water, blend it up and then strain it out. Now you have a nice garlic flavoured water. Alternatively, you can mash up a garlic clove and chuck it in a bottle with the spray bottle and just leave it in there and keep shaking it every now and again. Spray that on your affected plant and hopefully that will help to deter those bugs from you. The other option is uh, using an essential oil called neem oil. I'm gonna warn you, this doesn't smell very nice, uh, but neem oil is a fantastic oil for a bug deterrent. It's been used quite a lot in natural uh, lice remedies. So anyone who's got kids who's probably quite used to trying to deal with those, um, neem oil is quite a good thing. So the recipe for the neem oil spray actually involves using some liquid soap. So two teaspoons of neem oil to one teaspoon of liquid soap, mix that together, pop it into about two liters of water and give it a good shake up. Now you've got a nice neem oil spray to spray on your vegetables and hopefully that will stop those bugs come in. When you see those bugs, spray it on there. It will kind of suffocate them and hopefully make them fall off. And it shouldn't affect the other insects and birds too much either. That one actually leads on to my half recipe for you. Uh, the other recipe that we've used with some great effect is actually a washing up liquid spray. So for anyone who uses a washing up liquid in their house, which most of us do, pop in some of the washing up liquid into a litre bottle of spray put in some warm water, mix it all up, and you've got a spray ready to go. The reason I said that this is a half recipe is because you need to be careful with the soap that you're using. A lot of recipes that I see, um, say Dawn soap, which are, you can get in the US, I'm not quite sure what the version of it over here is. I'm always a little bit wary. I wanna only be spraying things into my garden that I'm quite happy with. Uh, we use only we only use eco-friendly soap in our house. We either use Phil or we use Ecova. They're both really good. Um, really good brands and they're biodegradable they're vegan they're absolutely friendly for us so chucking that in there i don't have a problem with that but other things like fairy liquid and all of that kind of stuff that i try and avoid anyway i wouldn't use that in my garden personally but a little couple of squirts of dish soap into a litre bottle of spray will do the trick lovely so again spray that on your plants when you see problems and hopefully that should help to suffocate them and make the bugs fall off which is kind of what we want Okay, method number five is actually my favorite, but this is a long-term method. So this is not something that we can use as a, as a quick turn preventative method, but it should be the foundation preventative method to your garden. And that is actually improving your soil health. Good soil health promotes good, strong plant growth. Good, strong plant growth then prevents or then helps to 
prevent pest overtaking. Weak plants are more susceptible to pests. So what we want to be doing is growing plants that are actually a lot stronger and a lot more resilient to pests. So building up good strong soil health is one of the best things you can do for pests in your garden. So what is the best way to build up soil health? There's loads and loads of videos out there and I'm probably not going to go into it in a huge amount of details. Um, Charles Dowding's no dig method is really really good. You can check out his channel. He's much bigger than mine so find his link in the description and he doesn't know I exist so if you are watching this child Dowding, I'm a big fan but mainly the best thing you can do is actually adding really good nutrient dense, com dense compost to your plants and mulch in your plants as well so adding a good layer of compost in the autumn letting that letting that bed in and keeping on adding it over the summertime is a really really good way to stop it good nutrient dense compost will help build all those microorganisms and actually improve the soil health which is exactly what we're looking for and two other methods of course are mulching your crops as well so things like plant clippings and using the chop and drop method really awesome ways to help improve your soil health and the last thing is to use crop rotation there's a little bit of controversy in the garden world as to whether or not crop rotation is a good idea but i figure if you've got a few different raised beds like i have why not try crop rotation it's not going to harm you anything is it and it might actually help your soil so crop rotation mulching really good compost you're already on your way to building better soil which is what we want as gardeners isn't it so thank you for joining me today good lifers i hope you've enjoyed the video i hope you've learned something what is your favorite method to deter pests or have you got any methods that are better than mine or that are just different to mine that i haven't covered here i would genuinely love to know about them so drop in, in the comments below and let me know please don't forget to like and subscribe the video it does actually help a small channel like mine and it gives me that warm and fuzzy feeling when i see a new subscriber it's actually genuinely really lovely so please do that it will make mean the world to me um if you want to find out what we're doing a little bit more you can check us out on instagram other than that i will see you guys in the next video it has been lovely bye bye